Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast. The next interview is Chrissy Whitehead. She is performing a show on November 5th, 2022. It's a benefit for the Entertainment Community Fund. I'm going to get right to the interview. Will you please tell the audience a little bit about yourself mm-hmm. and a little bit about what you're up to these days? You have a show coming up and I'm going to publish this so people have plenty of time to buy tickets. Thank you. Hi. Well, yes. Hi, Michelle. I am Chrissy Whitehead and um, I am a performer and a teacher um, and a director and a choreographer, I'm all the things like we just talked about. Like we're, we constantly have to keep our lives just moving forward. And so, yeah, I'm from South Carolina originally. Um, I've been in this business for about 20 something years. I was started out as a rockette. And, and then I ended up uh, really pursuing my career as an actor and a singer and lived in LA for many, many years doing television and then did some Broadway. And now I'm giving it back and passing it on and have my own company with my best friend teaching um, dance, acting and singing. And so life is full and creative. And, uh, and I'm here to talk with you about a show that I wrote. So your company is called Broadway Arts Community, correct? That's correct. So we're basically, we act as coaches and mentors and we provide a community, like a safe space to train, to have connection with other artists in dancing, all styles, acting for camera and musical theater for song coaching, building your book, college prep and career prep. So uh, Alexis and I kind of had a career where we've tasted all, all aspects and elements of the industry, not just one genre. And so we feel very passionate about moving, paying that forward and giving it back to the next generation of artists and also wanting them to feel like they have a, I don't know about you, but I I had a teacher in my life that was a mentor and still is. And um, I am a lot of who I am today is from that belief in me, not only as an actor, but then she believed in me as a musical theater teacher. And I'm on the faculty at AMDA now because of it. And she's the head of the program. And so we basically aim to be who we needed when we were younger. And that's what BAC is. It's a family, it's a community, and uh, all is welcome. That's so good. That's really great. Now, tell me about your show because I'm coming and I'm going to bring my friends. And I want to hear about, I want to hear how you created it, what made you want to write it. Because one of the things I want to do with this podcast is open up a space where people are free to talk about there is a lot of challenges that go with this career, not just with this career, but just being alive in this moment. Mm-hmm. And I want people to feel unafraid to talk about things that are challenging them and struggles. I did a whole series last year about alcohol and artists. And mm-hmm. I talked to a bunch of friends who have gotten sober in the last couple of years. And so I want to hear everything about this show that you're doing. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the show, the name of the show is called In My Own Little Corner. And it came about, well, what really happened was four years ago, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, bipolar 2. Uh, when I was 38 years old and I was living in the mountains and I had just moved, I was done with New York City and I was making a very big drastic change again, which I have tend to do in my life. He's big um, highs and lows and big jumps in my career. And I moved down to the mountains with my husband and um, changed my life and had a therapist basically say to me, I think you need to be reassessed. And I was like, reassessed for what? She was like, for for bipolar. And I was like, bipolar? I was like, what? She was like, well, you know, one week you are so up and the next week you are just in shambles. And I've been writing every note since she does. She writes every note session. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, great. So what do I have to do? And she was like, well, there's, so I drove 45 minutes. I go to this psychiatrist and lo and behold, I sit there for two hours and I do this really in-depth assessment with my husband, you know, sitting right beside me trying to see if this is what I had. And sure enough, I had answered six out of the eight assessment questions, even though there were like, I don't know, 50, 60 questions. Um, and it started to little by little kind of make sense, but not, I got on medicine and I changed my medicine and my whole world turned upside down. And the show is actually about me starting with this diagnosis and unraveling like 
how did I get this? And where were the signs? And what were the clues? And what was I doing in my life? And going back in my journals. And then the two parallel stories to that is my mother's relationship and her relationship with mental illness. She actually died pretty sad and horrific. Um, She took her life, but she slowly took her life. It was always like a surprise to me when I would come home because I'd see her worse and worse. And so she declined. And so I guess I'm writing this story because I want people to know that we can get help. And my mom didn't get help and did not and refused to see that she had anything going on and thought that, that it was, she was put in an institution and fought tooth and nail to get out and her mind overtook her and she never got properly diagnosed. So I'm writing the story to save my mama and like give her life worth because when she died that way, I got to be honest, I was like, I'm out, I'm out. Because if my mom who loved me beyond, (laughs) beyond can take her life like that and tell me that she's miserable and she's ready to die and I put her in hospice and, you know, it's awful. So I was scared and I got on medication for the first time in my life, but I was scared to because she didn't want it. She was actually on painkillers. So, you know, the whole opioid crisis, I'm not quite sure if she had opioids, but she, I saw her. So she, I just, she was. And so I said, no, I'm not getting medicine. There's no way. Like after my mom died, I was like, no way. I'm never taking medicine like that. I'm never doing it. And then luckily you can't do this life alone. Like you said, so it's good that you're doing these podcasts. So people can just sit and listen and hear and go, I'm not alone because I reached out to my best friend's mom. And I said, every morning I'm waking up and I'm saying, what's the point? What's the point? If my mom can die like that and she's gone, so can I. And then that's when my, her mom, who's like a mom to me said, Nope, you need to call a gynecologist today. And I want you to tell them that you are feeling depressed and suicidal And I want you to tell them right away and they will get you in. And I was new in a city and I did. I just randomly called a gynecologist. I started crying on the phone. I said, I'm not well. I can't think straight and I'm depressed and I need to see someone. They got me in that very day. And that's when I started medication for just antidepressants. Right. Right. But then, then cut to three years later, I have this, this thing with my suicide, this, uh, sorry, therapist who was like, I'm wondering if you're on the right medication. So it was very interesting. I wasn't planning on that. That wasn't, that wasn't in the cards for me. And so when I go back, so this show is me unraveling all of that. It's me going back to my mom and our childhood together. It's me finding out more secrets that my mom kept for me. It's me finding out my birthright. It's me. It's, it's packed. It's not your stereotypical uh, one woman show, but I want it to be a gift for all of, I just want it to give, I just want to share the story because if I hold on to this story, there's a lot of people out there, either you have empathy or compassion for someone who may be going through struggles in their mental health or addiction. I mean, everyone, to me, I honestly feel like we all have something. We're human beings. We all have something. I'm not saying we all have something like bipolar, but we all are going through something at some point. And it's okay to say I'm not okay. And it's okay to get help. And it's okay to get on medication if that feels right to you. And it did. And and so I've gone through this the last four years. I cannot believe I'm doing a show about this. I got to be honest. There's asked me a year ago and you said, so in a year, you're going to be performing a benefit for uh, the act, the entertainment community fund, and you're telling your mother's secrets and your secrets, and it's just going to be all out there. I'd be like, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, what is so funny to me is that we, we work in the same place and seeing you in the halls or in the teacher's lounge, like, and knowing your credits and knowing your Broadway arts community, I always, I, on, I have to be honest, I was a little bit jealous. And I would say, oh, you're not working as hard as she is on your career. You've the this career is pat. Yeah. The comparative thing. And I had no idea you were going through this, you know? So, so just a note to everybody who's listening, you just never know even people with the brightest smiles and the most put together outfits can be struggling and you just don't know. 
because most people don't say anything about it. No, we don't. And even my mentor even said to me, I didn't know you were going through all this. I mean, she's been at both readings, you know, and she was like, I just feel bad that I didn't know. And I, and, and some people have been saying, I, I'm attracted to your highs, but so those manic highs, right. Kept me like the highs and then the crashes that people don't see. Cause nobody, nobody really wants anybody to see anybody when you're really sad and just like out of it on the couch or whatever. Right. Nobody wants anybody to see that. But I think that what I've learned to do and I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for is that I feel way more grounded, but part of that, like, you know, how you were saying, you see me from the outside, you see how hard I'm not working as hard or, oh my gosh, she's doing like 5,000 things. The more and more I've learned about bipolar. I mean, that's a part of my disorder. Do you, you know what I mean? That is a part of it. So I can see, whereas before I used to say, it's just me being me. This is what I do. I'm da da So now <laughs> I go, okay. I, I am practicing stopping at seven or eight o'clock at night so I can have dinner with my husband and not go in. But do I have a huge to-do list that is with me every single day? And is it five separate things? Yes, but that's just what makes me, me with what I have. But I also am learning that the main thing that got to me, Michelle, was this. She said to me, that therapist said, if it wasn't so detrimental to your brain, brain damaging, like your highs and your lows, I would say, keep going. It's all the creatives and all the scientists have this stuff. She was like, but it leads, it can lead to Alzheimer's and dementia and even suicide. Oh no. Yeah. Great. Yeah. (laughs) So when she said that, I was like, okay, what's the medicine? (laughs) What am I taking? Cause I don't want that, (laughs) you know, and life is up and down and all around. And so I'm using the gift that has been given to me that I have been harnessing and continue to harness as a storyteller to bring people in and to bring people as if they feel like if you come see the show, I want you to feel like you're sitting in my living room with me and you're unraveling this with me. And then you're like, wow, how did that even happen? You know, I did have a student who was my stage manager in the second reading and an artist who I just adore. And she said to me, Chrissy, you know, after watching this show and being here with you in this show, and I've looked at all this stuff that you've gone through, I think to myself, golly, why can't I just be vulnerable? I'm just ready to be vulnerable and open now because if Chrissy can go through all this, (laughs) what am I holding all this back for? And I was like, well, that's an interesting way to like, that's another way I didn't think of what people would walk away from, from the show, but I want it to have a life, Michelle. I think it's important. I don't want it to be just that I've been working on it all year long. I have an amazing dramaturg. I got really lucky. I don't know how this happened, but I have an arts angel who believes in me and she's been sponsoring the bulk of this investment of the show. And then she introduced me to Ken Cerniglia, who is the dramaturg for Hades Town. And I was like, whoa. And I remember in the beginning, I was like, oh God, oh God, oh God. I was so scared because it was the first person that was outside that was reading it, you know? And I was like, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do this. And he was from the get go, like, you have to do this project. This is bigger than you. And I'm happy to help. And he's been working on it through the grace of Kirsten, Kirsten's help. You know, it takes a village. And so I hope my hope for people who come to see the show is that you walk away with hope as well as empathy and compassion for you never know when people are going through things. We're not separate. None of us are really separate. We're just human beings that all got plopped on this earth and we're here for a very short amount of time and then we're gone. And you know, I miss my mom all the time. I mean, I miss her all the time. And, and I could have gone that route, you know, where I could have given up. And I think life is worth living as best as we can, even in this, even in the trauma, even in the drama even in the sickness, just like going through the trenches. And I also understand when people want to go. I do. I understand. I watched my mom, her body turned into, you don't even want it. You would never want what I saw my mom turn into. And I thought, God, I don't want to be in that body anymore either. It's okay, mama. It's okay. So no one's got it figured out. And I definitely say that in the show. I'm like, no one has it figured out. I'm not doing this show to be like, I'm the poster child for bipolar two disorder. It is not about that at all. It's just about, I'm sharing my story and my mother's story. And if it touches you along the way, 
then I've done my job. That's so beautiful. And as you can tell, I've been crying through this whole interview. Question though, let's say the, someone wants to put this show off, off Broadway or Broadway or whatever. Do you see yourself through this every night, eight shows a week? Because that is a challenge. I could see that. Or do you plan on just putting it out in the world and maybe somebody else could play you? Mm-hmm. Both. I think it's both. I think it's both. I mean, the team, the creative team, I have Brian Knowlton as my director choreographer and I'm, he is my, one of my dearest hearts, best friends, soulmates. And I couldn't imagine doing this without him. And then Nick Wilders, who I've also fallen fallen in love with, we started working together at AMDA and we've kind of become a duo (laughs) in all the classes. And now he's on my second showcase. So he's music directing it and orchestrating it. I, we were all talking about it and Ken too. I think I'm thinking it would be great if it was colleges and tours to, to get to the young people and go there. I've even been wanting to do it at AMDA. I'm still waiting on hearing back from that. And then I'm open to a one woman festival. I was told like after this is done on November 5th, it's a benefit. You know, I got to get the rights. So I have to deal with the music rights because right now I've taken all the music that has deeply affected me in my life and, and is really entrenched in the storytelling of this, of this show that we, that we can only do because it's a benefit, but okay. after this, I've got to, yeah. And then if, if, if anybody's interested in doing, yes, I would do Broadway. I would do a limited engagement only because, and it's so interesting. And I say, it's so matter of fact, because it's not about me. It's really about getting it out there to a broader world. So people can hear this because I know that my amount of honesty, a lot of people are afraid to do and be. So if I can be someone that can step out on a stage and be this raw, because I didn't even tell you the half of it of what's going to happen on that stage, but because I've practiced and I understand, I mean, honestly, the benefit I think is going to be emotional. I think because it'll be my first time in front of a live audience. But I think like, as you know, Michelle, like our job is the practice and the art craft of doing it. And even though it is my, my life, you know, I I'm removed. My mom died in 2013. Me writing the show was half the battle, you know? So I think, I think that Broadway would be, would be incredible, like a limited engagement. So then in hopes that it would also be available on Hulu and Amazon prime. And so people have access to it. You know, I just think we don't, we all just like live and breathe on people's stories stories that have been passed on to us, stories that are being told right now. Like if we aren't sharing stories of what is happening to humanity, what are we doing? Because that's the thing that keeps us going. That's the keep the thing that goes, I don't want to be like that woman. I want to tell, I want to tell my daughter, I don't have a secret. I'm not going to hold this in because that secret killed her. So, you know, that's where I think like, that's, I look at it and I go, okay, my mom taught me, she raised me. She says, listen to your elders listen to their stories, listen to what they've done. They will teach you about life and then you get to make your own mark. So I'm excited. And yes, I do want to give it to somebody else because no, I will not want to be doing this for forever. You know, I am excited to, to hand this on to another fabulous storyteller out there who has the vulnerability and, you know, I dance a little bit in the show. So it would be a little bit of a hard thing to cast, (laughs) but uh, I think it's definitely doable if if an actor is not a dancer. That's great. That's great. I just, I asked you that because years ago, one of my best friends, Gary Bedigan, took me to see Next to Normal. Yes. And we sat in the front row and Alice Ripley was performing, but yet I knew it was a little close to the bone. Yeah. And she's sitting in the chair, the office chair or whatever chair, a rocking chair, I can't remember, but tears were streaming down her face. And I thought to myself, girl, I knew it was past a safe zone. I knew it was like, yeah. and, and I've heard her speak and she even says that the part destroyed her and whatever, but I just, I wonder it's your story. You'll be telling it, but you know, sometimes things just take off and I would wonder what would happen if you had to do like a six month run or a year run. Like, I don't know. Is it sustainable? That's, that was. That is interesting. I mean, I don't think I could do a six month run. I mean, ultimately the goal is to get the story out there to as many people as possible. Yeah. But I, I I don't know. I think that we, there's a way of doing that cinematically. And so, yes. and that's why we are, I am GoFundMe, a GoFundMe campaign was to, to film it, but it's really just been helping us to produce it. We are going to film it, but we're not going to be able to film it 
in the way that I would like. So I'm hoping that this film that we do of that night would be a ticket for someone else to say, yes, this is something we want to invest in and let's go do this cinematically and let's go do this somewhere else and we'll like produce it there. So, um, but it will be filmed, but I'm, but it only to see, to gain interest, to get, you know, festivals or, you know, but I also am like, oh God, just get me past the November 5th, because I think that that's just going to be, and there's a talk back after. Oh, good. Okay. There's a talk back after with, um, cause only an hour. It's not like, I'm not, it's believe you an hour. You're it's enough. (laughs) Bring your (laughs) tissues, bring your tissues, but know there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but, and then Dr. Alyssa Hurwitz is a psych, a doctor, a therapist who's also known as Dr. Drama, which is really fun. And she mixes drama with theater, with her practice. And I I know of her through a friend and she's going to lead a talk back with me with a licensed professional and myself and the audience. And yeah, I, I, I I really, I am pumped. I'm excited. I can't believe it's actually happening because I started doing this in January. So it's coming up quick. So Tell us where it is. I'm going to link in the show notes where people can go get their tickets. Yep. So tell us where it is and what time and all of that. So it's um, November 5th at 7 p.m. for like an hour show and then a talk back after at Riverside Theater on 91 Claremont Avenue. And that's actually a really sweet theater in a church on Claremont Avenue near like, I think, 125th Street exit on off of the one. And yeah, the tickets are $25, but that's a suggested general donation. And then after that, you can actually put a donation towards what it's going to, which is the Entertainment Community Fund, um, which helps artists all over funneling and anything. Really what I wanted to do was a fund for people who can't afford medicinal and psychiatric care. Unfortunately, I, there isn't anything that I can do that where I know that that's going into that fund unless I have like fifty dollars to $150,000 set up. So one of these days, I will set it up in my arts angel's name and, and that'll be the benefits from this show. You know, like if I am on the road touring it, like half of the proceeds are going to go towards this fund for artists who can't afford psychiatric or medicinal care. And it might be the Chrissy and Kirsten fund. Kirsten. Let's Mom. talk about the arts entertainment. They, they changed the name. It used to be the actors fund and now it's called the entertainment community fund. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, they, they help people. Let's say you're an artist and something happens, you have an apartment fire or God forbid, or something happens, you can go to them Mm -hmm. and ask for some help and they will help you. They also have many offshoots. There's, there's a clinic. If you don't have medical insurance, health insurance, they do many, many things and they do the big fundraisers like Broadway bears yeah, and the the red bucket brigade and the Easter bonnet. And I participated in those back in the day and it's super fun. It's a super way to uh, mingle with the other people in the industry. And I'll never forget, I was pregnant with my daughter and Henry Winkler and the late John Ritter, who were doing a play called The Dinner Party. They, you know, came up to me because they noticed I was pregnant and they were very sweet to me. But yeah, the entertainment, Uh, the, what is it called? entertainment, Entertainment community fund community. Okay. I'll have to memorize that because in my head, it's still the actor's fund, but yeah, they're very helpful. So because this is a benefit, you're clearly not getting paid to do this and you are just putting in the hours. Yes, it's true. It is true. Yeah. I, my mom always taught me about the importance of giving back and yeah. And I just felt like, you know what? Everyone else is getting paid because I wouldn't do it that way. Like, I mean, right. Kirsten, I said, Kirsten said, what, what do you need? And I said, I, ca- I have to do this right. I can't, you know, I can't have people. So I said, so everyone's getting paid by me. And then, and then maybe, maybe, in the, you know, in the future, I will see some type of payment, but it really wasn't about that. It was something bigger than me telling me that I need to just share this. Cause if you, if I really, if you really ask the question, do I really want to tell all these secrets for everybody to know, not really, but there's something else that is calling me. That's like, but when you share it, people care. There's like something about like sharing and, and not sitting in the, there's no victim. There's no sitting in this, you know, poo poo head or not poo poo head, but you know, the pity, there's no pity party in this. There's only finding the solution. 
which is what I've been trying to do since I got diagnosed. So, yeah, I know. And I also think that by doing this, it's going to create a ripple effect. And there might be some person that you don't even know that hears this and chooses to carry on another day. Like you just don't know. And you won't know until maybe years later, or maybe you'll never find out. But I don't need to know. Isn't that the best part? I don't need to. I mean, I, I, I think when you do something on this scale, I am aware of the impact it could, it can have. I mean, I just had my second reading. And when I looked around to everybody with tears in their eyes and the whole entire time, I was like, in my mind was the first time because I haven't done a show like that. So I'm doing work that is moving people in a way that is different than what I'm accustomed to as a singer, dancer, actress. Right. And so I felt the urge to want to take care (laughs) of all of them in the moment. Um, So I'm, I'm actually looking forward to being able to be that example of saying, it's okay. I made it through. And so can you, Yeah, you know, and it's going to be okay. Like, yes, you're right. Cause like, you're feeling it for just an hour. And I've been dealing with these things for years and years and years, you know, but I, I'm, I really, yeah, I'm just glad I made it. I'm glad I made it to, to tell the story, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming on and I will include all of the information for everybody. Thank you. So I can't wait for people to sign up for your classes and coaching. I'm going to link your website and everything below and um, that's so nice, I just, to you, Michelle. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have to support each other, you know. And I've known your name yeah. for so long in this business. Like we've been in this business for a while, and it's like it's really cool that you're doing this. Um, it's another way of giving back yourself. So thank you for for having me, and and I really really appreciate it. You are more than welcome. Everybody, please come to the show. You'll you will see me there. Yay! The Showgirl Tip of the Day podcast has original music composed by Joshua Holloway. Find him on YouTube, Joshua Holloway Music. This podcast is written by Michelle Bruckner and edited by Michelle Bruckner and Joshua Holloway. Find me on Instagram, Showgirl Tip of Day. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week with a new episode. Show.